Ladies and gentlemen, so this is a Kojima episode that I have been waiting for. Uh, this is Kojima talking with Ellie Fannin. Uh, obviously, you guys should know who she, who she is. She is a sister of Dakota Fannin, who was a pretty famous child actor. And Ellie Fannin is equally as famous as she is also as a child actor so uh she is going to be in death stranding 2 so hopefully we'll get some more death stranding 2 uh juicy bits here uh the uh movie you guys are going to be watching today is actually going to be uh snake eater uh which is um uh metal gear solid 3 snake eater uh which is again arguably one of the best metal gear solids i have shown it before so i'm just going to continue showing that uh, i'm not going to waste any more time let's get straight into it let's go Only Lord knows. We take a deep dive into his brain and shed light on his creative process. Yeah. Let's get right into that brain of his. Brain structure. Konnichiwa, Kojima Hideo des Podcast Program Hideo Kojima Presents Brain Structure. Konkai mo start to shimashita. Hello. I'm Hideo Kojima, here with the podcast program, Hideo Kojima Presents Brain Structure. Now, why am I so hyper? Well, that's because we have a special guest joining us today. Uh-huh. And so my partner today is this guy in LA. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Keighley. Producer Jeff is back. Awards and the host of TGA, the Jeff's Answer on this podcast. Mr. Kojima, as always, it's a pleasure emceeing with you. And boy, we have a very special episode today. Uh huh. Uh huh. We'll be talking about the Who Am I poster that made quite a stir online. Oh, yes. Very special guest. Yes, this yes. This episode will be the one and only Elle Fanning, the actress who will appear in Mr. Kojima's new game. Without further ado, let's jump right into our talk session. I wish this one was in video. I really do. <laughs> Miss L. Fanning, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. I'm very excited to be here and talking to you guys today. Mm. Well, I, I gotta say, we are all so thrilled, first of all, that uh, you're in the game and we got to see your name in the trailer. We don't know much more, but uh, a few months ago when Hideo, uh, you know, first posted the the who am I image uh, everybody mm -hmm. started to get might be you and and I imagine you probably uh, very quickly uh, got some alerts on your phone from people right I really did it was unlike anything I had experienced yet because I've I've never been in a game um, before especially you know Hideo's games of this magnitude and how they are so so popular mm -hmm. um, obviously and when I posted the you know the who am I little silhouette of my face on my Instagram it just went wild like it was it was blowing up and they were um trying to figure out you know through photos that I had liked on Hideo's page like that okay we're fall we're yeah those are well pretty wild for you know and, and I even think people put it together that Nick Reffin kind of he probably introduced you guys and like they honestly kind of cracked the code like it was very funny mm. uh, you know these diehard fans they just completely knew um and so they did but it, and, and then after when it was revealed i have had so many people on the street strangers like fans um you know especially younger younger people coming up and being like what is it tell me what you're a part of like mm. trying to get me to spill all the secrets i'm like i can't say anything but they are so excited so i'm I, I, the response seemed it was it was very big i hadn't experienced that <laughs> no, for, when, for uh, films or anything <laughs> dale had it all planned out for months he told me about the plan oh so by the way the big secret with her is who she's playing some people think she might be playing the baby in the thing that um Norman Reedus' character was carrying around, but after watching the trailer for Death Stranding 2, it's possible that's not who she's playing. She actually may be playing a completely secret character that we just don't know yet. So that's that's the story surrounding that. How he was going to tease things, and uh, now it's finally been revealed you are going to be in um, 
DS2. Uh, Hideo, maybe tell us why did you why did you want to cast L in this game? What was your interest in, in working with L? I've always been a fan, and I followed Elle's movies ever since she was a child actress. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Super 8, and you know she was in Nicholas Winding Refn's movie. Oh, yes, Super 8. She was in Super 8. Very good movie. Very good movie. Demon. And Nicholas had told me time and time again just how great of a person Elle is. So even before I went independent, I knew that I wanted to cast her in one of my games. Mm. One of my favorite movies is Mary Shelley. I saw that in theaters, and that did it for me. I haven't seen that one, I don't think. And of course, I have the soundtrack to Teen Spirit. So when I was planning DS2, I always had L in the back of my mind as a really story. interesting. I consulted Nicholas right away, and that's how I was able to get in touch with L. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I mean that was such an exciting kind of text to get. I guess Nick told me about it first. He was like, you have to, you know, I, I, I do this game and this is my, my friend Hideo, he's a genius and he wants you to be in this game. And mm. you know, he basically <clears throat> was saying, you have to do it. Like it's an amazing experience and um, please make it work. So it seems to me that uh, Kojima has that particular ability with people that people tell other people that they need to work with them. Uh, so whenever he mentions that he has somebody in mind, so he has actually mentioned that he's never not had, he's ever not gotten an actor to say yes to his roles. Uh, so every time he asks an actor, they always say yes. Uh, but I think what what he, what he what he's suggesting over and over is that there's this little aura around Kojima that whenever he's ready to cast somebody, other people tell whoever it is that they've got to do it because it's Kojima, right? And I, of course, I, I was like, Oh my gosh, I want to be a part of this. And I got to Zoom with you. And, um, you know, I heard a lot of secrets that I'm not going to say, but you kind of told me the story of DS2. And I think that's what's so intriguing about this is that it's it's so beyond a video game. And of course, it's mm. something that you can play. But I think as an actor, that's, you know, this is a full story. It is completely like an immersive movie in my eyes. That's kind of how I see it. And I think it's so smart that you choose actors <laughs> in these parts because they are full fleshed characters that you write and you get you you write the everyone's their lines and you have to be emotive and show that emotion. And and I, I was also really intrigued with the character that you wanted me to play and <laughs> wanted to do that. So I actually looked at it as another movie role because in my eyes it is a movie and it does you know there is a certain amount of time that we have to carve out to to talk and to do the voiceover and to really um get to make this movie come alive and it's not just a video game and mm -hmm. it's so special what you're doing and obviously that's what makes you stand out from all the rest and stand out from the crowd but i'm just i'm really i i'm fascinated about this world because it, it's not really i will admit it's not a world that i i didn't grow up playing a lot of video games <gasps> um, that's a shame family, they all played sports and so it was and i honestly didn't even grow up watching a lot of movies funny enough so <laughs> my family they're all my mom played tennis my dad played baseball my grandfather was a quarterback in the NFL, so it was always like, go play outside. Oh. Like, don't sit in front of the screen, go play outside. Really? Her father was a quarterback in the NFL? A grandfather? I, I did not know that. Did people know that? Was that? Is that like a common knowledge? Fanning. Huh. Interesting. I don't know that. I didn't know that. And my sister and I were supposed to be tennis players, and um, we ended up in this whole, you know, filming movies and in these fantasy worlds, but... Um, I'm so now through you, I'm I'm getting a bit more introduced to this world that I I, uh, I hadn't been so in before. But now I ha I, I'm in. Now I'm in, I think. <laughs> well, I'm sure you uh, and you probably watched on YouTube or something some of the trailers for DS1 and so oh, yeah, what they've done with that. And it's just it's amazing, as you said, because Hideo's work is, is so deep. And oh, yeah. Yeah. So she's right. Her grandfather is Rick er uh, Arrington. He played for the Eagles. Interesting. Yeah, he only played three years, but yeah, there, yeah, she's right. Obviously, she's right because she knows. Intellectual, right? And there's always kind of meaning and thought behind it, and it's not just a you know a Twitch game, right? I mean, it really is about. You said the story and the narrative. When he describes it to you, it does feel like a movie, right? 
Completely. Yeah. And also I love the fact that it's about trying to bring people together. I think that was something that Hideo kind of hit on the head. Because when you think traditional video games, you're always like, oh, you're just trying to p kill the bad guy. Mm, or mm. you think like you're just trying to murder someone or kill as many people as you can. And this is, that's not what you do with um, Death Stranding. And it's kind of, it's about trying to bring us together and make these deliveries and make these connections with these. You have to meet these characters and mm -hmm. fulfill the journey and the goal. And I thought that was a really nice message, you know, when he described that. Uh, so Kojima does say uh, that one of the actors, I believe it's Sydney, uh, the French actor, said that the only reason, the only way she would be in a Kojima uh, game is if it wasn't about like shooting. Um, uh, he hasn't interviewed her yet, but I will be uh, kind of curious to see uh, to hear more from her. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty much all of the actors seems to be suggesting that you know they're not really interested in all the shooting and whatnot. Um, fps and third person games but rather they really are more interested in story uh for this game so that's actually pretty cool to hear absolutely no i think that's you know, yeah a lot of your vision i know even on the, on the first game was said this idea of connections and everyone uh, coming together and you said uh you know the characters are really such a, a star of the game and all these characters so oh you're joining the cast we saw in the trailer that uh, there are a lot of other great uh cast members and i'm sure part of the fun for you will get to you know interact with some of these uh, other actors and mm -hmm. can't share too much about your character although there's lots of i mean you can online. but what what you what can to you when when hideo first sort of pitched the project to you um you said it was an instant yes but was there anything that kind of grabbed you particularly about this this project well under normal circumstances, I would have gotten on a plane and given you the pitch in personnel. Mm. But because of the pandemic, we had to do it over Zoom. That is true. Yeah, we had like a whole screen sharing situation on Zoom. And um, you, but really pitched it beautifully. Like it was an amazing PowerPoint presentation. Um, you definitely sold me on it. Although I do wish that you could have come out and seen me. And we have a, we have so many friends in common. Mm -hmm. I know, um, and they, you know, they, you know, Yohan is there with you right now and visiting. I, I would love to interview Kojima. Um, I'm just going to keep throwing this out to every episode that hopefully one day I actually get to interview Kojima. Um, that would be great. Although I'm a nobody and Kojima gets tons of interviews, but I'm just going to keep throwing this out there that one day that would be amazing. And, um, also known as Wood Kid, who I've known for for a very long time so um i feel like yeah i wish i wish you could come visit maybe maybe soon i know it's so far away though i'm in london most of the time and yeah our time difference is is very <laughs> different right now um well, but you but did, that, i know you did do the the scan because we saw the photos that today posted I did. in the, the scanning room so what was what yes. was that process like for you that was incredible. I'd never done anything like that before. It, mm. it, honestly, it, it took a full day. Um, and also if you're trying to find your character in a lot of ways, because you have to, you know, we're, we're dressing up in the costume and we're trying to find what hair is going to work for the character, what makeup and, mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and also just the, the movements of the character, what's going to work. Cause of course, you you know, there are the traditional, like you just stand there, not in any pose at all, but in this crazy dome with thousands of cameras that all go on, wow. and go off at the same time. And Hideo was there all through the day. You know, it was, I think it was like 4 a.m. for him. <laughs> yeah, it was. We shot for three days. Wow. We were doing this and he's, he's sitting there on the computer and observing everything and is so hands-on. I think that, um, it's, it's it's very rare to find that with with projects in general I, I seem to find sometimes that people will you know they'll they'll be there and they'll do the presentation but then when you're actually doing the stuff they won't really be involved but today mm. so he's always there um and always you know just <laughs> he's always there smoothly and it's his <laughs> vision and it's, it's then not everybody knows kojima's always there he's always watching everything <laughs> very, um I don't know it's a very supportive feeling like you feel very supportive and sport supported and um so yeah all through that day and you also do crazy faces like <laughs> really insane emotions that you have to um 
you have to kind of move your lips in certain ways and close one eye and scrunch up your nose and mm. so they can really manipulate your emotions in your face and um gosh yeah they you, i mean my whole body everything is scanned like they can make me do anything <laughs> it seems they really can interesting um, they did say like the technology is even from the last game i mean it's like oh yeah way more than before so i think yeah so that's the thing with motion capture technology it is improving exponentially um even for uh even in movies for those who have not seen avatar way of water dude some of the stuff that james cameron is doing with that is just impeccable uh, in fact, I would love to see uh, Kojima and um, James Cameron talk to one another uh, because I think they're both um, pretty pri pioneers within their respect uh, respectful uh, fields, even though uh, they are doing two separate fields. But th the aspect of the, te the technology is very similar, right? So I would love, absolutely love to see those two talk to each other because I feel like James Cameron is breaking ground uh, continually breaking ground in the stuff that he's doing. And Kojima is doing the same thing, right? Just obviously going to keep progressing and progressing, but I'm excited. And, you know, I, I know that the world hasn't seen, I know who I am as a character, but the world hasn't seen what my character is. But um, I haven't actually seen her completely yet. So, right. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting give it, for give a little while. Give us the deets. <laughs> Give us the deets. Come on. I can't reveal much right now, but we've been using a new technology this time around. Mm -hmm. So I think the scanning process was a bit difficult. Mm. But Elle had fun with it, and I'm really thankful for that. We had her wear some costumes and did hair and makeup too. We built up the image of her character together. I can't say anything about Elle's character yet, but let's just say I wanted to use all of Elle's talents and charm and create a character unlike any other. Mm. And even though I have the whole character set up and the script is finished, I'll take in observations I make about Elle and incorporate those characteristics. For example, I changed up the script based off Elle's gestures and movements off camera at the scanning sessions. Okay. So I think it's a little bit different from how movies are filmed. Yeah. I, mean, I, I remember you said that because I remember after we had finished that day, you got to spend more time with me because obviously we'd only just, just done that initial Zoom or you watched my films that we hadn't, you know, spent a lot of time together. But after that day, you were like, I think I'm going to rewrite the script now. <laughs> I, have, I have new ideas. Wow. Um, after meeting you um, a bit. So that was... So Kojima has mentioned that, that he had to rewrite the script. For those who don't know, he did say that, that he had to rewrite the entire script. I wonder if that's what she's refer referring to here. But I do imagine with somebody like Kojima, he probably rewrites scripts quite often, actually. Because I would imagine like most uh, most creation of movies and games and storytelling, you kind of have to rewrite a lot of scripts. In fact, one of the best lessons that I ever learned in college was one of my teachers who said the that writing is, is all about editing and that's what writing really is about like your first draft is never going to be your final draft and that's the reason why i, I was never a good writer because i just didn't like the process of editing but that's where the actual meat of writing is it's the editing the over and over of rewriting uh coming in with new ideas as it were i prefer doing it in video form uh, it's the same process so writing is the same process as content creation uh you create a video and then you have to keep working with it keep editing it. and in fact the, the reason why my videos are not quite as good as they could be is precisely because i don't have a ton of time to really sink into those edits and really make them uh make them as good as i want them to be because i do full-time work and you know and on the side pretty much the equivalent of another full-time uh, content creation and that, i feel like that's the difficulty of all content creators is that getting to a place where you are making money doing that so you can actually devote more time into your project so uh so all the things that my videos are lacking a lot of it has to do more with uh with knowledge that i just i'm still learning and a lot of it also has to do with just the time necessary to continue to put in edits to, to do reshoots and to uh to uh, sticking new parts into making the video shine so 
Yeah, it's a, it, it's fun. I really love content creation, and I imagine somebody like Ojima is, is having even way more fun doing the stuff that he's doing. Uh, but it takes so much time, and it, it's a real bummer for me that I didn't get to start it when I was a lot younger. I'm 38 now, and I'm just barely starting the, the process. You know, and I feel like if I had known about this, the idea of content creation when I was younger, I would have loved to start this stuff when I was like freaking 16. Um, because just that amount of knowledge that you gain just from doing it over and over and over is really, really vital. That's really interesting. The only other person that's really worked that way, I will say, that I've worked with was Nick Reffin, funny enough, because he, when we filmed The Neon Demon, he films chronologically. So you have the freedom to change the script, whereas, you know, normal film shoots, you're always going back and forth and all over the place. So the script pretty much has to stay locked. But Nick didn't know how that movie was gonna end while we were filming it. And he actually like asked the crew, I mean, I think he did this as a joke, but he asked the crew to put in a bucket how everyone wanted it to end. Cause he was like, I don't know yet. So maybe we'll have a contest and see who has the best idea. But it's it was that was neat to have the freedom to work kind of in a more malleable fashion, I guess. Mm. It, was, it was ever changing. So there's was, it was always a surprise. Yeah, so I'm curious because it seems like uh, Elle Fanny's character might be the, might actually be the main character in uh, Death Stranding 2. Uh, they haven't officially came out and said it, but she was the first image that we got. Uh, and Elle Fanning is a pretty high profile actor. So especially in the younger crowd. So I kind of feel like if you're going to put her in anything you're doing, she kind of has to be the main character. So I actually wonder if she is. But again, we don't know what she's doing yet. So that'd be kind of interesting to see. You probably can't give us too many details, but can you say how that day with Elle, how that may have changed the character or inspired, uh, you know, some elements of how the, the script or the character evolved? <laughs> <laughs> mm, well, yeah, I, I changed a lot. I even added in new scenes. So I changed stuff during performance captures and whatnot, but on top of that, I want the actors like Elle, for example, to be a part of the creative process by participating as a creator. Mm, uh, now, interesting. Ellie, we've got lots of filming still to do on this, so it's going to be uh, you know a project that's yeah. going to extend into I'm sure next year for you and everything. Um, are you excited to be doing you know more of the the PCAP and whatnot? I am. I've never really done anything like that. I, the closest, um, I think, like on Maleficent. Obviously, it was oh, it was a while like a while ago, but I did a few things like that like we did have scanning it wasn't as like intensive scanning but there were scans and like you know a lot of green screen so you're on set that they're going to create later and um so i'm kind of i'm used to to that but i've never done like motion capture had to be in the suit right I've never done right right oh uh, yeah no she's never done that obviously do it and also I've in fact uh, yeah I, i've not seen in any motion capture i mean obviously most actors <sighs> Sorry guys, it's late over here. Uh, most actors obviously don't do motion capture, so. Watch videos of, um, you know, people on Death Stranding doing it for the first game. So um, that it, it, it's just, it's fascinating to me because they have to, it really, and I, I think acting in general is just using your imagination, but you really have to use your imagination to a whole new level on something like that because everything nothing looks like it's going to you're not in the world at all you're not in the clothes you have crazy dots on your face you know you have to so you really have to just transport yourself to where that is and i, I like the challenge of that i think that will be exciting i always love to challenge myself and surprise people and do mm. things you know that are gonna shake things up a bit and i think that this game has done that in a way for me people were not expecting me to be in this <laughs> i think it was such a surprise maybe that's right was, um, yeah 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 such a, such no a it is definitely a surprise that she, uh that she would be in a kojima um game uh but like i said kojima is quite good at making roles for specific actors and all those actors saying yes to it so he just has a way he just has a magical way about doing stuff uh, there never seems to be no time conflict. Everyone seems to say yes, absolutely. I want to be a part of it. So, uh, yeah, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe one day he can cast me in one of his roles. That would be dope. I would totally be a great actor for that. <laughs> I'm, ex I'm looking forward to, to yeah, using my imagination more with the motion capture. 
that's one it's thing something new. Yeah. when Hideo was there even directing you for the scanning I think the same thing with PCAP he's so such a hands-on director because he really is you know you have to translate what's in his brain to explain to you because sometimes you'll get some images or some some concept art but then as you said when you when you finally see the game in the final scenes I'm sure it will be a revelation to you about how it all got translated right 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 completely it's like you can you know talk about the scene but then when the whole world is 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 in front of you and um even like super 8 we you know the monster wasn't there for super 8 and mm. JJ actually I think that he kept it secret from us of what the monster looked like I think he did that on purpose he kind of wanted us just imagine the scariest thing possible for us. Super Eight was a like, really good movie. What is the scariest imagery you can imagine. He didn't want to cloud our minds with what it actually looked like. So we all were imagining something different. And then ultimately, obviously, it you know came together and we got to see the unveiling of the monster, which we were so, you know, it was wrapped in so much secrecy. But there is yeah, acting is it's just it's all living in a fantasy land a lot of the time. <laughs> No, the same thing here where you said, I think when you'll see the scenes, you know, Hideo and his team, they do such, I mean, the visuals are so uh, incredible as you saw in the trailer. It's just amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, how and it's probably, you know, changing constantly too. So he can kind of show you, oh, this is maybe what it's going to look like. But by the end of it, I'm sure he'll have a completely different vision. So that I can't, I can't wait to watch. I'm like, they, does your video game, does it have like, um, like premieres? Like how does it, or you, yeah, it does video games have premieres? And that's, that's it. Or is there a spectacle of some kind? Uh, uh, we don't actually have premieres. Right. But L, if you ever want to see the game, you're always welcome. Okay, yeah, 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 right. Show you anytime. <laughs> right. And during performance captures, you'll be surrounded by lots of monitors. And on those monitors, you can actually see in real time what the environment, what the world looks like in CG. It's not high quality, but it's something. So it's not exactly like how JJ did it with hiding the monster, because you can technically see where the monster is located. It's easier to imagine it than before, mm. but it's still not the complete picture. And typically, the actors will play around with that for like the first hour. It's not an easy task, but I like to make it fun on set. And I'm not James Cameron, so don't worry. Oh. I'm not going to put you underwater and film. <laughs> so that's the James Cameron reference. I didn't actually expect that, but um, again, I would love to see him talk to James Cameron because I feel like they're they're both groundbreaking in what they do, uh, and they're both respectful, uh, respectful uh, mediums. So I would absolutely love to see that. Hopefully, one day, but we'll see. No, but part of it is the fun. I think of you know you will interact i think with other actors and that's part of you know the, yeah. the interplay between all of you and that's what you see in some of the scenes even in the in the the trailer uh, the teaser trailer yeah. it's, you know you see the actors and you saw you know, in ds1 right where they're kind of interacting with each other so you, at least sometimes you have someone to play off of um yes. but yeah it's a very it's a very different process but is really amazing with the technology as you said with what uh hideo was able to to do yeah. for this hmm. i know it is funny because even when i you know i got to you know when you're watching things that Hideo has put together, obviously in the early stages of, of the game, you know, he, he'll he always say like, it's this isn't done. This is like, this is not what it's gonna look like at all. But then I look at it and I'm like, it looks pretty amazing. You're like, mm. it's really good. And it's like, but in his mind, he's like, oh my God, it's gonna be so much better. Don't even look at this. And I, I get it, but it's just um, the technology. It is really, it is really funny. So I'm like, this already looks, so outstanding oh, so, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah it's just only going to get better in his mind i can you know you want it's going to be perfect that's <laughs> <laughs> where do you think this will be one of the first video games you play when it finally comes out i do actually i do because <laughs> i i have to <laughs> right I like, right i have to i was a part of this i'm like i I'm really curious. Do you think uh playing the games that actors are in is like part of the contract, you know? Oh, like, did she have to play Death Stranding Part 1 to get the idea of what Death Stranding is? I would imagine she'd play some of it. I mean, because she's, she's an excellent, excellent actor, right? And, you know, excellent actors doing research. So playing Death Stranding would have to be part of your research, I would think. So it'd be interesting. I would love to see a v video of her actually playing the game. You can't possibly be in a video game and not... Because the, the thing is, Kojima games are not that easy to play. If you want, uh, they're kind of an interesting... 
and there's somebody taking their clothes off on the screen you're watching. Sorry about that, guys, but it's a video game. It's all polygons, so I'm sure you don't care. Um, but a part of me is like, Kojima games are not the easiest to get into. If you don't, if you if you're not a gamer, they're kind of they're they're kind of a lot. If that's your introduction to gaming, that's a gigantic introduction. And I wonder if people who play Kojima for the first time don't find it as fun because Kojima is really about the story. So you really have to dive deep in to really uh, to really find your enjoyment in Kojima games. So I would imagine I would be really interested to see all these actors play those games for the first time. Yeah, I would be I would be very interested in that. Play it. I'm like, yes, I will. <laughs> uh, so Hideo, the process um, on on DS2 now that it's been announced, and you know L, and obviously we saw you know Norman's back and Leia. Um, how will the will the production process be any different on DS2 than DS1 in terms of how you're working with L and the other actors? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know for one thing, you've had to do a lot of it remotely, which is very. Well, I'm trying to shoot in chronological order, following the timeline of the story. Mm. And with games, you can't shoot it like a movie where they'll lock in a three-month or four-month schedule. Right. And all at once. Yep, 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 My yep, yep. Games is I film the cutscenes, and the staff and I give each other feedback to make sure we keep consistency throughout the game. Mm. So we can't shoot it all at once. Right. And instead, we shoot regularly, like once a month. Mm. And anything that isn't realistic in the game will affect the story, so we adjust when we need to. The story of the scenes will change as we go. As I said, we've been shooting performance captures chronologically, but we're reaching the limits of remote filming. Mm. So we started going to the actual set, and we'll continue to do that. A little bit different process, and again, having to do some of this virtually. As you said, hopefully you and I will be in the same room together uh, working through it. But as you said, Al, as you, you have to shoot it in parts. Is that going to be... that's also somewhat different for you, I guess, to sort of, you know, put your mind in the character and then have to sort of move out of it and come back in. Um, right. So Dale is giving you some kind of visuals and some description of it. Um, but that would be a, a little bit different process for you too, I guess, to do it over time, right? Mm. Yeah, well, because also, you know, with the film, you there is like a flow to it because it's just kind of this concentrated amount of time that you get to focus on it and finish it. And then it's, you know, you, you go home and it's done. Um, but for for this, I it, it really... You know, it's a it's a long process, and you can kind of keep coming back for for more. And I'm filming a, a show right now, mm. but then also we're obviously talking about the game, and so I'll be in between shows. You're just trying to fit in the time to to finish the game and and the, schedule that. And um, so, yeah, it definitely is uh, more you know sporadic right 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 yeah yeah like a movie or something yeah because that's the thing with games right because again uh a triple a game like kojima makes those things take between three to five years uh so you would imagine uh the first three years of that is when the shooting happens unlike movies most movies that you guys watch most actors c complete their part in like weeks i mean weeks to no more than you know a month maybe a couple of months uh, like he said, three months. Video games are way different because video games are so much bigger, right? It, it, it is so crazy to think about it. A, an average movie runs between two hours and you know thir 15 minutes, right? Let's say two hour, 30 minutes. An average video game, an average AAA video game is 20 hours plus. Most triple a video games like the ones kojima makes those things uh, those things run a pretty long time um uh so uh for example this one well snake it is seven hours long seven hours of gameplay and that's this snake it was on the ps uh, i think the ps2 maybe, maybe ps3 no, no, it was on the PS2. Yeah, yeah, Snake Eater's on the PS2. Uh, because Guns of the Patriot is on the PS, uh, PS3. Yeah, yeah, Guns of the Patriot is on the PS3. Um, so a, a seven-hour game way back when, I think Death Stranding now, I'm, I, I, uh, I didn't finish Death Stranding, but I'm, I'm going to guess Death Stranding is probably about 30 hours. So an average game, an average AAA game runs between 20, and most of them run 30 hours and once you start adding all the extra stuff you can get up to 100 hours easily so that is a ton of work that goes into making video games and for actors who are doing mocap for that 
it's a lot. It's a lot. So that's why those things are divided up um, uh, into into different segments. So yeah, like she said, she's actually probably going to be doing the shooting for this for a three year period uh, and uh, at different interval times. So since this is a game, your character can kind of do anything and you know be anyone you want to be and change. Did you have a yes. new request for Hideo about? Oh how you want yes, to evolve or change oh. in the game. Well, I mean, he knows best, like story wise. Yeah, right. Um, but I am very happy with my character. I have to say, I am very happy um, with, yes, with a lot of things. Um, what are you allowed to part. say? Yeah, what are you allowed to say? I I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> what are you allowed to say? <laughs> trouble here. Come on, <laughs> Kojima, really give us something. This, this part in many ways for L, right? Right. <laughs> I really can't share much, but she's a very, very important character. Mm. And yes, I created the character with Elle in mind. So I was worried about her saying no to the offer. He always I says that. To throw out the scenes that I had written. But no one ever says no. A lot of pressure. Yeah, I couldn't say no. <laughs> no but obviously for you, when you know Nick, you said Nick had, had mentioned to you Hideo, and then you got on the on the, the phone with him. Uh, you, you said hadn't played necessarily a ton of games, but Nick obviously you know comes very highly recommended from Nick and everyone. Um, was it instant for you that you wanted to be a part of this, or did you have some pause about like, mm, do I want to do a video game, or were you curious about, about it? It really wasn't. I am very, I'm very like um, an instinctual person. Like even when choosing projects, like I, if there's something that I feel like I have to do. I will tr make it work. You mm. know, of course, your my my ma my manager and agents they're like, okay, but this is also a big undertaking because you're gonna be, you know, it takes a long time. A long time, time. yeah, and yeah. Scheduling wise, it might just be easier, you know, if you don't do it, it might be right. Yourself. I'm like, no, I have I, to make it work. Oh like, man, feeling of I just wanted to be a part of it. I would be so devastated if I had said no to this and then. You know, I saw it coming out. I would just be really upset to have missed the experience. Yeah, I guess also, that's part of it, right? That's part of it, right? I've been just been a part of that experience. He's on the complete other side of the world, and we get to talk and have this, you know, collaboration together that hopefully it will will last, and we can create other things. And um, I'm being introduced to a world that I never have been before. So I think it would be a real loss if I had said no, I'd be giving up a lot. Um, and so I knew I kind of, I knew I was always going to do it. I was completely ready to fly out to see you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty, um, I'm pretty, I'm strong willed. Like when I want to do something, it's like, we're going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we're great, grateful you said yes. And as you said, I think it's it's so fun that everything has been in some ways so virtual already in the scanning. And you said, haven't even met Hideo face to face yet. Um, no. partially, mostly because of the pandemic, I... as Hideo said, that he hasn't been able to, to travel around and hasn't even been to the U.S. Um, in a few years. And you know, his first trip was over to for Game Awards to reveal this, uh, this teaser trailer and, and finally answer the question of who am I? And uh, I think people were wondering, you know, were you going to be in maybe a different brand new game yes yes who are you yes too that you're going to be in um and that's part of the reveal so everyone's uh as you said there's lots of theories on the internet on who your character might be and and what role they will play have you have you heard any of the rumors i've seen a couple rumors that huh? are interesting that i'm like i need to ask Hideo. so I, there's something that's like funny to me that i'm gonna I, like not on this podcast though. oh no <laughs> something come else. on I'm give us something Quick, right like yes the diehard fans i feel like they Dude, that's the thing man you can't get stuff past diehard people man gamers we find stuff out we throw theories out there and a lot of those theories end up being true so yeah i, I don't think she's the girl in there yet that um um that was me character running the first one i really don't i think it's going to be a brand new character that's uh that's going to be interesting and important they put stuff together um i don't know no one's really hit the nail on the head i don't know how they could because it is it's this character that he's created so it's mm. not, you know right. not exactly what people expect but no, that's no, part of no. Because, you know hideo's fans they get this great relationship with them um teases them and plays with them um you yeah. know across all his games, oh does he ever within uh 
it felt like within minutes uh, when the first uh, photo went up, uh, people were guessing you might be in it um, and, and superimposing photos of you uh -huh. on top of the uh, the poster and things like that. And even guessing the, you know, who am I? Did that tie to the name of one of your movies? Uh -huh. Trying to guess was it somehow, you know, Hideo's. Uh, I heard all the, I, I heard, heard all of those. The, who am I phrase? What, what inspired that? Well, first of all, with movies, when they announce that something's going to be made into a movie, they'll reveal the title or who the director is and also who the cast is. And just that piece mm. of information is enough to get people talking. No one is doing that with games. At least, not before they start shooting. Right. So I first came up with the idea that they wanted to create a buzz once by just announcing the cast. And by asking the question, who am I? It's of course asking the audience who the person in the poster is, right? but it also ties with who she is in the game. And well, obviously the answer is Elle Fanning. But here's what's most important about this teaser. It's not about who it actually is, uh -huh. but more so who you want it to be. That's the question I was asking to the world. And their answer was Elle Fanning. Oh, interesting. Fanning. Everyone wanted it to be L. And what? That was the correct answer. That was the resounding response that we got, and that's what was most important. It might not be my place to say, but gamers all over the world wanted L to be in the game. And I oh. think the phenomenon of the Who Am I teaser proves that. They were hopeful. <laughs> Phew. Thank God they said they they said the right answer. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. You know your fans though, Hideo and L were so, so But if that's the case, it's it's kind of a clever trick though, right? Because the only way we would have guessed El Fanning is because he he would have he would have had to put clues in there to make it clear that it was El Fanning, right? Thrilled with welcome to the video game world and there's no better way to start than with the Hideo Kojima game. So uh, we can't wait to learn more. Yeah, thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Bye, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so that's it for Al, guys. Hmm. <laughs> it's time to wrap up this episode what did everyone think miss l she's you know very cute and very young who am i yeah hideo? she's very l fanon is very cute yeah it was such a great episode hideo uh i'd never met l before but i was just I love how she spoke about you and the medium and the reverence she had for this project. I can tell that she's very passionate about it. And one thing I will say about all the actors in your games is that, you know, they're never just doing it because someone told them to do it. Mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. You know, it was uh, about the paycheck. It really feels like they're creatively invested in building a character and a story and a world with you. Um, so I, I can't wait because I don't know much about what Elle's doing in, in, with you, but it's clear that she's very excited about it. And I think she's a phenomenal actress. And, mm. and this is great. That this is kind of her gateway into the world of gaming. So it was really such an honor to hear from her. Uh, and I can't wait to see what you guys uh, create together. I think it's going to be a very, very special character. Yeah, same here. Same. I think it's going to be fantastic. Putting Elle in a video game is a big responsibility on my part. So I wanted to make something that will live up to her expectations. And she's so young, but very grounded and smart, which you could probably mm. tell from our talk. We still have a lot more to shoot, so I'm looking forward to making something great with her. Yeah, Al Fan is only 24. She's really young. From her previous movie roles and whatnot, but I'm working on something new that's quite challenging. So I can't say what it is yet, but I hope you'll all stay excited for it. I think it'll be something that Elle Fanning fans will really enjoy. Yeah. But also, for those who are not yet fans of Elle, they will definitely grow to love her too. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for working with her on this game. Uh, we can't wait to, to learn more about it uh, and reveal more. There's obviously many more layers to, to the S2. Um, well, there you have it. Brain Structure is looking to hear from our listeners too. If you have a message for Mr. Kojima, if you have thoughts on the program, or if you have ideas for themes or guests for future episodes, please send them our way. Mm -hmm. The link to the message form can be found in the episode description. We're waiting to hear from all of you. Awesome. <laughs> please look forward to next week's episode of Hideo Kojima Presents Brain Structure. Sayonara. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching this with me. Um, as always, for those of you who like this uh, Kojima stuff, I'm going to keep them coming. I know they're a little bit slow, and but I enjoy them. I really do. So thank you guys for enjoying them with me. And uh, yeah, till next time, have a wonderful week.